Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, Peggy, may I ask you three questions instead of two, like I told you? Okay, three questions. Okay, I will really try to concentrate, and I do hope that Allah lead me to answer your questions. <laughs> I, one of the questions I asked the Imam that was here a month ago, and he couldn't answer it correctly. Um, I'll get to that after these first two. Uh, I've been Muslim, uh, converted from Christianity to Islam up a few years ago. And when I did the Shahada, I didn't know, understand the meaning behind it. And so I was misguided. And um, my question is, if I missed a lot of prayers, do I have to make it up in the dunya? Like Qadr? You know, Qadar? Yeah, yeah, I know. You, you miss many Salat in your life. Right. Yeah, because I'm diabetic. Sometimes I go unconscious, and when at the time when I became Muslim, I was working, and I had different situations where I couldn't pray. And um, someone told me to make a qadr, like make extra fard after each prayer. Is that true? Yeah. I make note first, and your second and third questions. Then I will answer okay, all together. The second one is. Um, if I want to, I can, I'm diabetic, I take insulin, and I want to fast in the Ramadan, but uh, I don't know if it's dangerous, if I should do it or not. I don't want to go to Jahannam, you know, I want to go to paradise, of course. So I fasted one day, November 10th, last year, a very holy day. I survived the whole day, but the end of the, the time for the prayer, you know, to break the fast, the iftar, I almost passed out. My blood sugar went really low. Would Allah accept it if I just gave money? I just sent $150 to a family in Yemen to cover my fasting, but I don't feel it's enough for Allah. I feel I have to do more. I, I really want to fast. So what should I do? Should I fast half a day? Would that cover the whole day? I, and I'm very confused. Okay, and the third question? The third question, I asked the mom, like I said, last month. Um, I just recently got married seven months ago, and I'm really in love with my husband. And I not only do I want to be married in the dunya to him, but I, what do I have to do to be his wife in the paradise? <laughs> because I read in the Quran, the, the husbands, if they go to paradise, they get two wives called her, the female. They're like really beautiful. And, you know, I just... I'm sorry. I, I have to know these qu answers because I've been very lost over 20 years. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Terima kasih banyak. <laughs> Terima kasih banyak. Did you hear that Bapa said it's a good question? Your question Saya number malu. three. Saya malu. <laughs> I'm learning the language. What is your name? Halima. Halima. Okay. Uh -huh. Sister Halima. <laughs> Mashallah. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'll try to answer your questions. Okay. This is uh, mostly it's about Fikki, except number three. <laughs> so, um, is the, thank you very much. Uh, ada yang pertanyaan lain? Supaya bisa sekaligus. Ya, ada pertanyaan lain. Tadi, uh, harusnya tadi disebutkan namanya juga ya. <laughs> ya, ini sekaligus pertanyaan. Itu baru satu orang, tiga pertanyaan ya. <laughs> ada, ada lagi, Bu, pertanyaan. Bisa sekaligus katanya TPG. Um, rencananya ada dua sesi. Sesi pertama tiga penanya. Kalau masih sempat sesi kedua juga tiga penanya. Kalau nggak sempat satu sesi tiga pertanyaan. Oh, Oke, okay. ini masih ada nih. Silakan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, uh, saya ingin menanyakan tentang uh, hijrah dari uh, TPG ke apa kembali ke, pada Islam yang kafah ya. Uh, itu maksudnya uh, pe perubahan itu dilakukan secara total gitu atau ada step-stepnya gitu saya ingin tahu gitu ya, terima kasih ya satu lagi Banyak. kalau tidak ya, ah ya saya. silahkan eh, yang tadi bunda siapa Tobiba Tobiba bunda Tobiba Uh, saya Dini, uh, tadi uh, TPG kan bilang sangat pentingnya berjamaah. 
Nah dalam proses hijrah itu karena e, bisa istiqomah itu karena berjamaah atau e, berniat sendiri gitu. Ya gitu aja yang penting. Terima kasih. Ya Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Semoga Allah mampukan saya menjawab. Masya Allah. Saya bukan ahli fikih, walaupun kiai saya ahli fikih. Um, masih belajar. Saya coba jawab ini dari Sister Halima. Um, I'm really happy to hear that you are comfort. Not because you are comfort, but I'm happy to have a new sisters. All the human are our... Um, we are the same as a human, but we, when we are in the same akidah, so we become brother and sister with the hope that we will be together in Jannah. Insha'Allah. Amin ya Rabbal Alamin. So, you say that when you did shahada, that time you were not really understand the meaning behind it yet, so that um, in the term of implementation, you still mm, have a lack to do salat, especially also because you have a disease, so sometimes you mm, miss it. Um, then you ask me whether you have to do kada for it or how is it. I would like to answer with, um, I would like to answer about the salat it first. Okay. Uh, salat is a must in Islam. You know that, right? Because the first is shahada and after shahada, the implementation of the shahada is salat. Why salat is implementation of shahada? Because when we do salat, the first thing that we mention to Allah is Allah Hu Akbar. So nothing is bigger than Allah. And five times a day, we got reminder that nothing is bigger than Allah. We have a um, career, we have a popularity, we have money, we have everything. But five times a day, we have to stop from the world and come back to Allah. So five times a day, we have a reminder from Allah. You are only the creator. I am the creator. So it's five times a day we got that reminder. So actually, we are the one who need the reminder from Allah. And also Salat is one of um, Allah, wahyu Allah, wahyu Allah is what, Pak? It's message. One of the message from Allah, the only message from Allah, which Rasulullah received it in Sidratul Muntaha. He went there, Rasulullah went there. All messages from Allah come in the earth, in the world, through um, the angel of uh, Jibril. To Jibril, through Jibril, but Salat is the only message from Allah, which Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has to do the journey to the Sidratul Muntaha, met Allah there. So that's the importance of Salat. It's something that really important because it's a facility from Allah to remind us, and it's also a facility from Allah. Each and every day, five times a day, Allah give us facility to meet Him. To meet Him through Salat. Let's talk about the importance of Salat first. So it means because it's a must, because it's a facility, because it's a reminder, because we need Salat, because Quran said everybody that always do Salat, trying to always do Salat, so it's going to bring us to the better, better, and better way. Why? Because we always got a chance to remember that we are nothing in front of Allah. By doing salat, we remember again, Allah Hu Akbar. So that time we feel that even ourselves, even what we want, even our disease, even everything, it's not bigger than Allah. Allah is the biggest. That's, that's the first. 
And the second, if you ask me the rules, because you ask me about fiqh, about the rules in Islam. If you are missing salat, should I qada, should I replace it at another time? So it's like this. My guru said to me, because salat is a must, and because salat also giving us a reward, so we need it. We need that reward as our saving to be bring to another life because we never die. It's just, um, it's just move on to another life. So we need the investment. We need capital to go to another life. It's like my sisters and brothers were moved from Indonesia to United States. They need an investment. They need a capital. They need a preparation before. So we're going to move to another world. After we die, we're going to move to another life. It's, al, it's a barzah. So we need an investment there. And the biggest investment came from Salah. And after barzah, we're going to move to Ahira, which in Ahira, we're going to have Jannah and Jahannam. We need the investment. So we are the one who need it. Because Allah knows that we need it. So he make everything easy. How, how, do Allah, how did Allah make everything easy? You have to be standing when you, ha when you want to do salah. But if you can't standing, you may sit. But if you can't sit, you may lay down. If you can't lay down, you can you do it by your eyes. Just bling, bling. If you are sick and you are coma and you are hmm, unconscious, somebody else may be by your side and mentioning to your ears to do salah. That's how Allah makes salah very easy to us. With many alternatives. When you want to do salah, you have to do, you clean up your everything with wudu. People ask me, why in your religion you have to clean up again, again, again with water? And I said, who is people in this world that never go to the bath in the rest of their life? I think every modern people, they go bathing, <laughs> they, they need water, they like water, they like to clean up. So in our religion, I said, we are being guiding to clean up ourselves five times a day. So we are happy with it, I said. But if you don't need water, you can do the dusk. If you don't need dusk, you can use soil, tanah, yeah, soil. So that's how Islam, how Allah make everything easier about salah. So we have many alternatives of it. So if you, um, if you feel you are sick, because in my journey of hijrah, I've been experiencing sickness. So I'm, I, I tried to use that alternate from Allah, not from anybody, from Allah. If I cannot go to water, I use dusk. And then if I feel that I cannot do it by standing, I just sit down or I just lay down. But I keep on doing it. If I feel that I don't have a, a strength to do it because I'm sick, so I ask my mom to sit by my side and to guide me. So I try to do anything that I can to keep the salat because I need it. I need it as an investment for myself to another life. And the question, the, the next question is, should I do kada? You said like that. So it's like this. If you miss it unintentionally, first, you should replace it. But don't feel that Allah forcing you. No. Allah giving you alternate, giving you a way to replace what you miss unintentionally. You are sick, so you wake up like after the Al-Fajr finish. When you woke up, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, just go to the water and do salah. It's kada. It's okay. Before, you are not a Muslim. So when you convert to Muslim, you start from zero again. But when you become Muslim, you're already counting by Allah. So if on the journey of your life as a Muslim, then you know there are times that you are missing your salah. And your heart doesn't feel okay. You not feel calm. It means that you love Allah. So don't stop your love. 
when you feel that it's not comfort, when you keep on thinking about that, when you feel guilty to Allah, don't stop it. Do kada because your heart looking for it. How should I do kada when you do al-fajr and you feel I feel like I've been losing my salat, my al-fajr salat so many times. So after two rakaat prayers of subuh, then you stand up again. You said, Allah, I kada my subuh, which maybe I missing in the past. For Allah, nothing is rugi. Apa? Nothing is lost. It's all profit. It's all good goodness. So it's okay. Do it for Allah, not for yourself. Allah will always be there for you, inshallah. She's crying. Please hug her. <laughs> Mashallah. Mashallah. So it's fine. Nothing wrong with your disease. Nothing wrong. Be strong with it. I've been through that too. I'm a potency of brain tumor. So I've been, I've been um, struggling of it too. And then I've been experiencing disease which making me sometimes feel um, wondering why, why it should me. But then I remember. Because when we have disease and we feel difficult, then we remember and we need help. We need help from the biggest power which we, we, can, which we are sure that he won't fail. That's why we got this is because Allah wants us to demanding to him, depending to him. Because when we don't have it, maybe we are a strong person so that we depend on ourselves. Which is, it's not wrong. We have to depend on ourselves, but after ourselves, there will always be Allah and Rasulullah. Inshallah. So just do kada because you love Allah, because your heart is looking for it, and you are happy to do it. If you miss it unintentionally because your disease and everything, nothing wrong with it. Allah won't get angry. <laughs> but if you intentionally this is the time of salah. Ah, I'm lazy. I just want to watch TV. I just want to read books. I just want to dancing. Of course, it's a mistake. <laughs> because you put song, TV, movie star is higher than Allah then. You know? Okay? <laughs> okay. So, um, number second, um, fasting. Allah never force us for that. Ramadan is a must. Why it's a must? Because we have this apa ya nafsu dan syahwat ni apa? Desire and passion. Because inside us there always be a passion and desire. Passion make us want to do things in life, chasing. And then desire make us like loving each other, like each other, something like that. But Allah give us the passion and desire on its place, proportionally, so that we can get marriage, we can do sexual with husband, like in the proportion. What we may not do is let the passion and desire become a king of ourselves. So that Allah put Ramadan as a must, because it's like um, latihan. It's like a practice for us to handle that passion and desire to, be, to go back to its place. But like I said to all another jama'ah before, we are not only using our passion and desire one month in a year, but it's every day. So after Ramadan is the real war for us, is the real battle for us. So that Allah give us nafilah, is another fasting, sunnah. You can do Monday and Thursday fasting like Rasulullah. You can do one day fasting, one day not fasting, one day fasting, one day not fasting like Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. You can do three times a month if you cannot handle the rest, so you can try to do three times a month. But if your disease by the expert, which is a doctor, say that you may not do um, fasting, so you don't do it. Because my guru said to me, my kiai, my ustad said to me, when you get um, apa, um, pendapat, opinion. 
when you get an opinion from an expert, which is he is the expert, and say you may not do it, so you don't do it. That's Islam. Don't, you don't have to be fasting because he is the expert that tell you about that. So what should I do after that? Replace it with fidya. Replace it with money. Replace it with paying um, money, giving help for the poor, like the rules in Islam. So I will tell you the rules after this, how to pay it. That's fine, because you have a disease, Min, um, um, which actually in Islam, um, the fasting of Ramadan, have to be done by all Muslims, except those who are really, really old and those who are really, really sick so that they cannot recover again. So these two that really, really old and really, really sick that cannot recover again, they don't have any obligation. But if we are not on those two conditions, even though we have disease in our body, even it's heart disease, but if it, it's, it still can be cured, it still can be maintained and everything, but we have to looking for the opinion from the expert that said that you may not do fasting. When it come like that, and your body cannot do it, so you replace it with fidya. That's the rules that I know. Allah won't get angry. Allah never get angry. Allah never get angry. He is a Rahman, a Rahim. He loves us. He loves us. Inshallah. Um, <laughs> gimana caranya mau ketemu lagi sama suami di surga? <laughs> you really want to be with your husband in Jannah? Because you love him so much, you don't want anybody else except him in Jannah. So the only way to do it by loving Allah and Rasulullah more than your husband. You have to love Allah and Rasulullah more than you love your husband. Someone told me that I have to obey my husband and never complain and never make him yes, mad and never argue and always okay. appreciate him because if I okay. don't do that, then I'd be in the jah Jahannam. Okay. Is that true? There are implementation of what I said in the, in the first. Uh -huh. Rasulullah wasallam he said to us, if we want to feel the sweetness of the faithfulness to Allah, so number one, what we have to do is to love Allah and Rasulullah more than any love that you have. Okay. Number two, if you love someone or somebody or anyone or anybody, you love him or you love her because you love Allah. La ta'anta mahlukin fi maksyatil halik in Islam. Don't not... Um, Jangan um, la ta'ata, jangan sampai ketaatanmu pada manusia membuat engkau maksiat kepada Allah. Um, gimana translate ya? Jangan sampai, Pak bantuin saya Pak. <laughs> jangan sampai taatmu pada manusia. Don't let your taat being obey, being 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 obedient. Don't 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 be over love <laughs> no no la ta'ata li mahlukin fi maksiatil halik jangan sampai taatmu pada manusia don't let your obedience to human make you doing maksiat doing sin to Allah no, wait, wait, wait 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 and number three number three let me finish first number three you are afraid to go to Jahannam right so it has to make you afraid to do sin to Allah that three things is the message from the prophet to us to make us getting the sweetness of the faithfulness to Allah which it will bring us to the condition getting rid from Allah so if you want to be with your husband in Jannah the main thing is you have to get the rid of Allah Allah has to be rid to you to be with your husband in Jannah and the way to do it is don't love your husband more than you love Allah and Rasulullah. Okay. But the implementation, th that implementation in life, like what you said, like maybe Ustad and any other told you, there is a way to show you love Allah and Rasulullah more than your husband. The way to show it is, what is Rasulullah told us and say to us 
as a woman. So what Rasulullah told us as a woman, as a woman to the husband, as a wife to the husband, number one, taking care of your salat. You have to take care of your salat. Number two, you have to take care of your fasting in Ramadan. Number three, you have to take care of your kehormatan. Your honor, your body, your aura. And then number four, you have to be obey to your husband that obey to Allah. Not all what your husband said, you have to be obey. If what he said, it's a sin to Allah. That's Islam. So you have to be obey to your husband because your husband is being obey to Allah. If your husband told you, I don't like you to cover your aurat, just open it using mini skirt and open using bikini, you don't have to be obey to, to him. If your husband said, don't do salah, let's go out, it's okay, salah is later, you may not obey to him. Because in Islam, Allah and Rasulullah is bigger than anything. Permisi, sister. Uh, sister Sukma, the reason that I love my husband so much is because before I met him, my iman was almost zero. I had no, I, the things that he taught me in seven months about the Islam is so powerful. No one ever, no imam in this country ever taught me what I know now. This man is so important to me. He's my best friend. Of course. And he brought me here. I love the Indonesian people so much. It made me cry the whole time. And uh, Mashallah. <laughs> this man, he's, he's, he's got my iman back to me. Yes. He got me closer to Allah than I ever yes. have been. But so sister, you know, you know. But sister, he never Halima. tells me. He never tells me anything against the salah. He always want to make the salah exactly on the minute. Uh, he's teaching me so iman, so yes. much, so much du'as, so things I never knew. And okay. Over 30 okay. years, no one taught okay. me. Okay. Okay. I'm so happy to listen to it, but I also have um, kewajiban, obligation to remind you. I have an obligation to right, remind right. you. You may not love him more than you love Allah and Rasulullah. No, I, know. I love Allah okay. first, then the so, Prophet yes. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes. then, then my husband. Inshallah, you met him in Jannah. I always obey him. Inshallah, you met him in Jannah. If you keep doing that, first put Allah and Rasulullah above everything. Keep your love for Allah and Rasulullah. When you say that you keep your love for Allah and Rasulullah more than anything, even your love for your husband, by that time Allah will give you trials. So be ready for that. I can handle it. Yes, be it, ready so for that. I'll I mean, Allah will give you. trials to your love to make your love to Allah and Rasulullah being in the place. I've been through that in my marriage. I've lost my marriage. I divorced because in my marriage, I love my husband more than anything. So Allah give yeah. trials to put me back to love Allah and Rasulullah more than anything. Just be ready for the trials. I don't want to lose my husband. Of course. No. No, 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 of course. <laughs> no, no, you have to mention this first. Mention no, I mean, this. I love Allah first yes. and then the Prophet Muhammad. Okay, so you won't lose him Allah then. That's why Allah gave me to each other as a gift. Yes, that's why. you won't lose so him he then. he would guide me. Amin, Ya Rab. That's his Amin. name, Amin. <laughs> Amin, <laughs> that's his name, Amin. <laughs> Mashallah. Sister Halima, I have to answer the other question. Okay, so, Tarima Kasibanya. Mashallah. Aku cinta kamu. Aku cinta kamu juga. I'm learning Bahasa Indonesian. So. Okay, great. I make dua for you day great. and night. And I'm trying my best to speak in English. <laughs> you, you, you answered my question so beautifully. I'm Masha so happy Allah. I met you. Allah, all, it's from Allah, not from me. I'm nothing at all in no, front of Allah. No, you're beautiful. You, no, Luar, nothing. Luar Biasa. No, MashaAllah. Astaghfirullah Luar Biasa. Halani. I'm so scared of that. I'm okay. so scared of good words. All, all belongs to Allah. All belongs to Allah. Thank you, Sister Halima. We, we are praying for each other right. that you will be in Jannah with your husband. Inshallah. So taking care of your salat, taking care of your uh, fasting, 
do like what I said just now when you asked about the rules. I'm so grateful to Allah that I got to talk to you. No, mashallah. Thank you, Kajari. Thank you, Kajari. Mashallah. Thank you, all the Muslim is Los Angeles as the um, media to meet uh, us each other. Okay, selanjutnya. Ini kayaknya cuma tiga pertanyaan, ya. Yeah. Yeah. Nggak apa-apa, saya jawab. Um, berikutnya, ini dua pertanyaan lagi. Saya jawab secara langsung saja. Uh, hijrah. Kenapa saya kembali kepada Islam, perubahannya secara total atau bertahap, lalu berjamaah, bagaimana bisa istiqomah karena berjamaah atau sendiri? Um, kembali kepada Islam, dalam proses perjalanan saya, I have to say and always have to say that everything happen only because of Allah. Ini belajar dari pertanyaan Sister Halimah, A women that really love the husband, don't want to lose the husband, want to be together in Jannah. Saya agak terbalik sebetulnya, tapi pakai bahasa Inggrisnya susah, mesti duduk sama dia nanti ya. Pelan-pelan, takut salah artinya. Um, saya pernah merasakan perasaan itu, dan saya pernah mendampingi seorang muslimah yang dalam hidupnya selalu ketakutan, nggak bisa ketemu suaminya lagi di surga. Sehingga dia timbul rasa cemburu pada bidadari yang dijanjikan Allah. Nah ini saya bingung ini mendampinginya. Ya, bingung saya ini mendampinginya. Jadi udah cemburunya dari dunia gitu. Ya, Maka saya katakan pada dia, pelan-pelan saya dampingi, saya bimbing. Justru rasa ini yang akan menghalangi pertemuan di jannah. Karena apa? Karena tanpa sadar suami tempatnya sudah jadi lebih tinggi daripada Allah. Dan keinginan kita tempatnya menjadi lebih tinggi. So, bahagia sister Halimah punya cita-cita to put Allah and Rasulullah di atas segala-galanya. Because that's what gonna bring you to jannah together with your husband. Because you are fight to keep your love to Allah and Rasulullah. Sehingga, nah ini yang sulit disampaikan, takutnya dalam bahasa Indonesianya salah dimengerti, nanti mesti dijelaskan. Ujiannya bisa sangat bermacam ragam, bisa jadi ujiannya di dunia dipecah, dipisahkan. Bisa jadi itu ujiannya, kalau ujiannya itu bisa ditangani dengan baik, cinta kita pada Allah dan Rasul, tetap berada di tempatnya, justru itu jalannya untuk menyatukan kita dengan husband di jannah. Ini Allah semua, maka ingin bisa mendapat ridho Allah, kuncinya cuma satu, ridho pada Allah. Kitanya harus ridho pada Allah. Apa aja ketentuan Allah? Wallahu ya Allah mu antum la taklamun. Allah maha tahu, Allah knows everything, antum you don't know anything. Allah knows everything, you know nothing at all. So whatever happen to us, whether it is good, it is bad, We are ridho to Allah. That's the way on getting ridho Allah on jannah, including wanna be together with the one we love. Kira-kira begitu, ya. Jadi um, kembali ke Islam, saya insya Allah ini semuanya hanya karena jalan Allah. Perubahannya total atau step by step tentu kalau mau dilihat dari seluruh umur saya. Bentar lagi tanggal 13 Juni umurnya 39. Umur 0 sampai 12, di, walaupun miskin, dididik dengan baik di dalam keluarga. Agamanya, nutup auratnya, ngafal Quran, segala macam. Tapi ternyata pendidikan yang begitu baiknya aja masih belum cukup kuat untuk membuat saya tidak terpleset kepada urusan-urusan dunia. Apalagi kalau nggak ada pendidikannya. Maka mau di Amerika, mau di Kanada, mau di Jerman, mau di Perancis, mau di Saudi, mau di apa seluruh dunia ini, Afrika, saya kemanapun diputar sama Allah, saya selalu titip. Yang penting bagi orang tua itu ikhtiar, berjuang, berjuang untuk memperkenalkan tauhid sama anak-anaknya. Karena yang seperti saya aja negaranya Indonesia, pendidikannya baik, kalang muslim keplesetnya sampai maaf. Mabok ya mabok, narkoba ya narkoba, zinah ya zinah, ngumbar aurat ya ngumbar aurat, riba ya riba, udah segala macam.